Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films, back again with Game of Thrones. Last time on Game of Thrones, we had the gift, where, to quickly recap, uh, John and Tormund are heading out to meet with the other wildlings to see if they will help against the White Walkers, basically. Uh, Sansa tried to have Theon help, but it didn't work, and people ended up dead by Ramsay's hand. Mace Raymond Targaryen died, Stannis might have to sacrifice his daughter uh, in order to win the war. Um, Tommen, Tommen got pissed because uh, Marjorie has been held captive. Bronn was poisoned, but then he was okay. Jorah met up with Daenerys and has now offered uh, Tyrion as a hostage, I guess, as a, as a gift. That's what it is. And Cersei was captured by the Sparrows after what they have learned from Brother Lancel. That's basically that. So, welcome to Tuesday. This is the first video of the Tuesdays. One more reminder for those of you that are watching these live. Um, we are doing three episodes a week. Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. So that I can catch up somewhat faster. So, yeah. With that being said, this is where I say no spoilers in the comments whatsoever. Let's stick to this episode and previous episodes of Game of Thrones that I've reacted to. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into episode 8. Curious as to where we're going with episode 8 because, I mean, last time, you know, normally episode 8 is fine, but last time we had Mountain and the Viper, so we'll see where this one goes. Here we go. Oh shit, this is where we start. A ruler who kills those devoted to her is not a ruler who inspires devotion. Ooh. You're going to need to inspire devotion, a lot of it, if you're ever going to rule across the narrow sea. Damn. He's so but fucking you brilliant. you cannot have him by your side when you do. Huh. Remove Sejora from the city. Shit. Well, fuck. All of that, and he's still getting kicked out. Again. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, how's it feel, bitch? Oh, meanwhile. Alright. So she's just taking on a new identity. So it's not exactly, you know, the face thing, but she is sort of changing who she is. He remains in his chambers. His servants often find his food in the hall, left untouched. You need to talk He's... to him. You need to talk to my son and tell him to come and see me. Come and see his mother. He... I tried, Your Grace. He wouldn't see me. He won't see anyone. Damn. Well, so much for Tom and doing shit. He's away. Killed those boys. They weren't those boys. They were Bran and Rickon. They were your brothers. You've known them since they were born. They were, they were lonely. Only what? They were fake. I can't. Tell me. I can't. Not unless they were different. Tell me. They weren't what? They weren't. Tell me why Bran and Rickon should be gone while you still breathe the air. Tell me to my face, Theon. Tell me that they weren't your brothers. They weren't Bran and Rickon. Yeah. He never killed them. I couldn't find them. They're all... Varys. King Robert's spymaster. Yes. He's the one who convinced me to come find you. He was my traveling companion before Sir Joros seized that role for himself. Joros sent my <laughs> secrets to Varys. But you trust him? Yes, oddly. He may <laughs> be the only person in the world I trust. Yeah. Except my brother. The brother who killed my father. That's the one. Perhaps I will have you killed after all. Your queenly prerogative. <laughs> I'm not going to kill you. Well, that's good. No. Banish me? No. So if I'm not going to be murdered and I'm not going to be banished... You're going to advise me. While well, you can still speak in complete sentences. <laughs> not enough. Lannister, uh. Targaryen, Baratheon, Stark, Tyrell... They're all just spokes on a wheel. I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. Ooh. All right. 
Shit, I don't want to leave. I want to. I want to keep. I like, want to stay with them. She's desperate. Look at what's become of you. Almost, I almost feel bad, but... Fuck her. And when you're done talking, do you get down on your knees and suck his cock? Oh! Yeah, fuck your shit. He's probably dead. Gather the elders, and let's talk. Yeah. My ancestors would spit on me if I broke bread with a crow. So would mine, but fuck them, they're dead. Ha! <laughs> yeah. Fuck them. I want to go with you. I need to get the old folks on the boat. I'm right behind you, I promise. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. Go on. What's happening? Shit. Is it the White Walkers? Oh shit. Shit. Were they all taken? I don't like this. Oh, it's the dead. The White Walkers are here. Shit. This is like the first proper, proper battle, technically. I mean, we've never really had a battle between anyone and the, the Whites. You need to get some fire going. Jesus! And fuck these things. I mean, shit, all this is happening in the... There's not even a White Walker here. Yeah, you gotta get to the Obsidian so you can fucking kill them. Oh shit, they're getting to him. Oh, never mind. Oh, good shot. What happened to the rest of them? Like the one dude. Oh fuck. All the fire's going out. That's a fucking White Walker. Gotta be careful, that thing can just break any shit you throw at it. Yeah, like that. Ah, oh, damn it. Alright, good. Shit. No, the sword too. Shit. Ooh. Ooh, Jesus. Come on, Johnny boy, you can do this. Oh! Oh! Valerian Steel, bitch! Oh! Good news! We found a new weakness! Whoa, hello! Who the hell? <sighs> Fuck. Come on, they gotta get out of this, right? Damn, this woman can kick ass. Oh, this music's weird. Is that her children? Ah, fuck! No! Aww. Oh my fucking god. Yeah, we might need to get the fuck out of here. 
Jesus Christ, there's so fucking many of them. Shit, run. They just, they needed a second, just go. Alright, so who is this fuck? Is, this, is he the leader or something? Honestly, he could probably just swim. Shit. I think he is swimming. Look at this dude. He just doesn't fucking care that they're on him. He's just like, fuck you. I'm a giant. Fuck you too. I'm a giant. Yeah, it's that dude. Who the fuck is this guy? Is he the leader? Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. He's raising them back up. Shit. Fuck. They're all getting up. As whites. Fuck. Fuck this guy. Oh, even her. Well. That went south really fast. Woo! <sighs> oh, boy. Oh. <sighs> that went south really fast. Fucking fast. It's, it's not even fucking episode nine. It's not even episode nine. And this shit happens. Uh, you know, I said, I said before the episode, I was like, you know, maybe something will happen in this episode because. It's episode 8. Normally, you know, the big climax is episode 9, but... But, you know, last season, not only did we have episode 9 as the big climax, but, you know, everything... A lot of stuff went down at the end of episode 8 last season with the Mountain and the Viper. Sure enough, things went down here. We got our first real battle between... Um... The the Night's Watch, the Wildlings, and uh, the Dead, the Whites. And then, sure enough, White Walkers came in. And that one dude, he, se he seemed to be important. He seemed to be important. Like, he's some sort of White Walker leader, I guess. Because he was the only one, you know, doing the stuff to bring the dead back. You know, the other White Walkers weren't doing that. I don't know. Okay. I mean, we went from, you know, because we were just here so that we could, you know, find out, you know, we or not find out, but we were trying to, you know, recruit the wildlings. And some of them went, some of them decided to join up, but then, you know, the Thens, they didn't. I think they will now, which, whichever Thens survived, I think they're going to I think they're going to be willing now, now that they've really seen the threat of the White Walkers. Ooh. I, it almost feels detached from everything. Because, you know, you know, after this episode... So the episode ended and I'm thinking about it. I was like, oh my gosh, it's so crazy. And then, you know, I, I looked down at my notes and the first thing I wrote down was Tyrion and uh, Daenerys. And it's like, that feels so far removed from anything else. Like... This is so different, and I know we've been kind of building up to that, and especially, you know, Stannis has been preparing for that. That's why Stannis is really going hard on, you know, 
taking the seven kingdoms now is not just because he wants the throne, but because he knows that he has to, you know, defeat the White Walkers. So, yeah, it's it's so crazy. It, it makes me wonder if the White Walkers, the threat of the White Walkers are almost going to overtake the show. Like, every plot line is going to converge on the White Walkers. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I mean... <laughs> I mean... I would hope that Daenerys' plot line does. Because I feel like of everyone who could take on the White Walkers, Daenerys may be the best option... Specifically because she has dragons. I know she still needs to work on, you know, getting their trust back and, you know, finding Drogon. But she has dragons. Dragons have to be good against White Walkers, right? I don't know. We don't know. Because we haven't tried it. Because the last time the White Walkers, you know... The last time the White Walkers showed up... You know, it was like, what, a thousand years ago? The Targaryens only ruled for 300 years, so... Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That, um... That was something else. Let me tell you, that was something else. Okay, but new development. It's not just... It's not just Obsidian. It's Valerian Steel. Because John's sword is made of Valerian Steel. John's sword is made of Valerian Steel. And, you know, anytime, you know... They showed, they're brilliantly, you know, shown in this episode is... That one White Walker with his spear, whenever his weapon collided with another weapon, the other weapon broke. We saw that, that, uh, that Fen's axe broke immediately, it shattered into nothing, basically, just upon contact with that. And so, you know, he does it again to John, and John pretty much instinctively goes to block it, but it didn't shatter. And I think they were both shocked, because John was shocked, he was like, it, it's not breaking, even the White Walker was like, the hell? The White Walker was shocked too. And John was like, shit. And he got it out of the way. And then he cut through that guy and he shattered like the White Walker that Sam killed. So the White Walkers are weak to Valerian Steel. Now we have another weakness. Originally it was just the Dragon Glass. Now it's also Valerian Steel. And I love that. Granted, not a lot of weapons use Valerian Steel. You know? It's like we have Longclaw, John's sword, and others. I'm trying to think. I mean, Ned Stark's sword, Ice, was, but it was melted down into Widow's Wail and, um, I think Oathkeeper. Which I guess Brienne has. What happened to Widow's Wail, then? That's what I want to know. Does Tommen have that? Fucking Tommen. Ugh. Okay. Just damn. Like, that really went fucking south. That not only did all the, you know, the whites attack, but also the fucking... Also the fucking White Walkers were there. Multiple White Walkers and... From what I can tell, the leader of the White Walkers. I, I don't know what you would call him if he has a name or anything, but... Yeah, that was, um... Jesus Christ. I mean, at least they made it out, but still... That's... Oh my gosh, that's crazy, man. Alright. Let's go... Let's circle back around to the rest of my notes. Uh, the first thing I wrote down was Tyrion and Danny. I, I, I just wrote down Danny because it's easier to sit, easier to say uh, spell than Daenerys. Um, yeah, it's it's so cool that you can do that that you can shorten Daenerys to Danny. It's like I wonder if anyone like has that name. I know I remember I heard somewhere that like apparently was it like Khaleesi is a big 
baby name apparently after Game of Thrones came out and it's like which is her title not her name no one's going by Daenerys but you could it's like that that would actually be cool naming a girl Daenerys and then shortening it to Danny meh maybe but I digress so Tyrion and Danny we finally got a real meeting between the two of them and he has pretty much sold himself to Daenerys like, you know, that was a real, like, you know, like, he really was convincing. He used all of his, you know, word skills to convince her that, you know, she needed him. Which, to be fair, it's probably mostly because she doesn't have anyone left. It's like, the most advice she's getting now is from um, Dario, and he's not a good advisor on anything. Like, at all. So, yeah, without without Sir Barristan, without Jorah, she really doesn't have anyone. So, it does make sense that she would take on Tyrion. Like, yeah, that, that makes sense. And I love, fuck, I, I love that conversation between the two of them just at the table. And it's like, you know, shit, I just want that to keep going. I, I do, I just want that to keep going. I want to keep, I want them to keep talking and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was cool, and it's also interesting that, you know, for a little while, for a little bit, he was sticking up for Jorah, you know, he was saying, it's like, well, yes, he betrayed you, but he is still devoted to you, but he still betrayed you, you know, that's still a big issue, and it's like, if you're going to go back to Westeros, you shouldn't, you can't have him, basically, so, instead of, you know, executing him, she just banished him again. Which, man, this guy is fucking determined, because he's going back. He's going back to the pits. He could have gone anywhere, and he he's going back to the pits to try to, I guess, to just impress Daenerys. But he needs to be careful. If he shows up again, he, she may actually, you know, execute him or throw him in a dungeon or something. But he's determined. He's definitely determined. Oh, boy. So, yeah. So, that was interesting. Definitely interesting uh, watching Tyrion and Daenerys just talk. Like, that's all I need from the two of them is just, just fucking talk to each other. And I'm so happy. I love that scene. Um... I wrote down New Arya, who I believe I believe they gave her the name of Lana. So this is kind of what she's going, what they're going for now, is um, now they're basically going for um, they're basically going for you know she's gonna work and not exactly to be faceless, but to sort of change her personality, change her identity. Uh, in order to best serve the many-faced gods, which is interesting. I'm trying to figure out what exactly her objective is with uh, the gambler. I guess just to see, like, if he'll, you know, do anything good. I guess it kind of seemed like, you know, you know, this guy's gambling on people's lives and stuff like that. And it's like, and it's like, okay, well, what does that have to do with with us, the House of Black and White? And it seems like, you know, it, it's almost like they're going to dispense justice to him, you know, if shit goes wrong. I guess maybe that's kind of where they're going, so we'll have to see. Uh, I wrote down Cersei, Kevin, and Tommen. So, we got to see, you know, Cersei in her desperation, which the High Sparrow has really taken co almost complete control of everything now. Especially with Tommen being secluded. So, everything that's happening, like, she can't, she can't do anything. There's no amount of sway that she has over the Sparrows. You know, just none at all. None of them care. They just want her to confess or to be put on trial, basically. So, yeah, that's, that's definitely interesting. And she is so desperate. And it's, I guess it's sort of the same thing that Jamie went through when he was captured, you know, he always said it's like, my father can do this and that and this, and, you know, he'll pay you and stuff like that. He'll he'll make you a lord if you save me. And 
you know, that's why his hand was cut off because you know the guy had had enough of the uh, had enough of his shit basically. And with Cersei, it's kind of the same way, although she's you know trying to be, she's not obviously she's not playing you know the father angle. She's playing more her as the queen, as the queen mother too. And and none of it works. And even when that when that doesn't work, then she's going for the threats, and it's like okay, well then I will kill you in the most horrible way possible and they just don't give a shit they don't give a shit about that and it's amazing and she's getting so desperate now so yeah we'll have to see where that goes um kevin is now uh the hand of the king at the orders of grand maester picelle which is interesting um yeah, so, and Kevin doesn't care. He doesn't care that Cersei's locked away in a dungeon. So, that's interesting. Maybe we'll get some more of that with him as the new Hand of the King. Um, but I don't know. It's like, yeah, is he, maybe he'll, like, he might, you know, leave her in there, but he might try to get her out. Just, you know, you know, leave her there long enough as sort of a punishment, but I don't know. He may just, you know, be like, well, my hands are tied. I can't do anything. And then Tommen, Tommen basically throwing himself into isolation because of what's happening. Because he can't handle it. He can't handle, you know, all these things happening where it's like, you know, you can go do something. You can send in the Kingsguard. You could execute all of the sparrows. Free your mother, free Marjorie, free Loris, get everyone out of there, and just appoint some new High Septum. You know? You could do all this, but he won't. He's too he's too soft and he's too scared. And now he doesn't have anyone to counsel him. Except, I guess, Kevin. Because Kevin is Hand of the King, but... Still. Still, I don't know. But... It is also nice to see... A pretty much Cersei... It's like, this is karma, and karma's a fucking bitch. It's like, Cersei is basically being, you know, given what she deserves for everything that's happened. Everything she has done has basically come back to bite her, and through her own plan, basically. Because it was her who put the High Sparrow as the High Septum. You know, it's her who basically turn the sparrows into the faith militant that was all her plan just so she could get back you know so she could control a bit more and then eventually get back at the tyrells and all of that has just come crashing down on her so yeah and the whole thing they just you know they keep saying you know she can get out of a trial and she will you know she can get out of her trial and you know be returned, you know, to freedom if she just confesses. The problem is, if she does confess, that does delegitimize Tommen's rule. Because at that point, Tommen is no longer the king. If she admits it, and it's like, yes, you know, I had, I had, you know, I had incest with my brother, and, you know, all of my children are his children, too. And it's like, that delegitimizes Tommen's rule. He's no longer the king. He's just a bastard. A bastard. It's so much fun to say bastard, you know, instead of just bastard. It's like, oh, you're a bastard. It's like, well, fuck, fucking who cares? Like, you're a bastard. It's, like, it's just fun to say it like that. But anyway. So, yeah, they're all they're looking for is the confession. So, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Joran, the fighting pits. He's still trying. I don't know what the fuck his plan is. Like, he's going to fight in the Great Pit for the Queen, and it's like, who cares? I, it's like, I don't think she's, I still don't think she's going to take you back, man. But he's trying, he's damn well going to try. So, yeah. And then, and then we had Hard Home, which, shit. So, yeah. Definitely interesting. I liked seeing, I like seeing, I don't know, I guess sort of the politics of the Wildlings, you know, some of them... Who are, you know, like they said, it's like, oh, my ancestors would spit on me for, you know, joining up with the crows. And then the the woman basically being like, 
Yeah, so would mine, but fuck them, they're dead. And it's like, yeah, fuck them. And John's saying, I like that John said, it's like, you know, think about your children, which probably, you know, hit her more because she has children. You know, it's like, think of your children. Think of the future, not the past. That's basically what it is. Like, we need to put aside the past. Both the Night's Watch and the Wildlings need to put aside their past in order to look ahead to the future. The future is war with the White Walkers. And that is most evident when the White Walkers fucking attacked. And whoo, boy, that was that was a battle. But again, which, I'm glad it wasn't just a battle. Like, we got some, you know, major developments out of this. You know, sort of the, I guess, the leader of the White Walkers. Um, I get, you know, I guess he could be too. Um, if you remember, like, long ago... Uh, this had to have been back in season four, at least, when um, when we had that one um, we had that one scene where a White Walker took a baby back to like this White Walker temple and set it down, and then it kind of seemed like the White Walkers there like almost came out of like somewhere else. Like we talked about that. And this one White Walker came over and turned the baby into a White Walker, I think. And now that I think about it, that might be the same guy. Like, the face design was actually kind of similar. It might be the same guy. So, yeah, is is this a leader of the, night, uh, uh, of the uh, White Walkers? Maybe. So, that would be an interesting development. Especially, and the main reason I really think this is because he was the only one... You know, putting his arms up and raising the dead. So it's like, is he the only one that can do that? Is is it sp- something special about him? Or is it something special about the White Walkers in general? I kind of thought it was just the White Walkers, but, you know, who knows? So yeah. And then the development that Valerian Steel does work on... Um, it does kill White Walkers. Which is good, because for the longest time it was just this dragon glass. It was the one... The one weakness of a White Walker, but now it's Valerian Steel, which I like. I like that. So, yeah. Um, So, I guess that's pretty much it. That was a crazy final scene, basically. And, but yeah, it was, it was really good, and it makes me curious as to where we're going next. Now, the next episode is episode nine, and um, if you remember, uh, last season I described... I described sort of a pattern I noticed with the seasons is that, excuse me, sorry. I noticed a pattern that season two, episode nine and season four, episode nine were just battles. And I think they were, you know, the main focus of the episode was just a battle and nothing more. So that's the thing is that, you know, in Season 2, Episode 9, it was the Battle of the Blackwater, and the episode focused on that entirely. And then, in Season 4, Episode 9, we had the Battle at Castle Black between the Night's Watch and the Wildlings. So, there's already a pattern there. Every seemed like every even-numbered season, we're doing this big battle. And then, if you go back, Season 1, Episode 9, uh, we had the death of Ned Stark, and then... Um, season 3, episode 9, we had the death of Rob Stark. So, it kind of seems like we're losing, like, every every odd-numbered season, we're losing a very main character. You know, Ned Stark was the main character of the first season. Rob Stark was one of the main characters, technically, you know. He was a major character in his sort of plotline, basically. But, yeah, it was just this big death that happens. So... If my pattern, if my if my theory is correct, then we're we're losing someone next next episode. Someone important, maybe a Stark. Actually, if we're going by this, if we're going by this, um, if we're going by this pattern, if you really want to, you know, think about it. You know, the first season, we lost a Stark. We lost Ned Stark. In the second, or the third season, we lost Rob Stark. Could we be losing another Stark? We haven't seen too many of the Starks. We've had Sansa, Arya. If you count John, then maybe John, uh, even though he's a bastard. Um, but we haven't seen Bran at all this season. I don't think... 
I think I saw somewhere that there is no Bran. I don't know. But we haven't seen him, so... We haven't seen him since the end of last season. And, um... And... Then... And then... Who fucking knows where Rickon is? God, we lost him in, like, season three, didn't we? Yeah. So... So, yeah. If my theory holds up, then... We may be losing someone important next se- or next episode. What is that sound? That sounded like Darby. Is he alright? Oh, I, ca- I had to leave him outside for a little while. He might want back in. That might have been that. He wants to come back in. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films and I will see you guys next time. I'm gonna go get him. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of my uh, Game of Thrones reactions, you can click on the playlist, you can subscribe if you haven't done that already, and be sure you hit that notification bell. And you can, uh, you can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media, links below in the description. I should go get him.